Chet Chat is underwritten by the law offices of Tim Fields and Pho Orchid, the nouvelle cuisine of Vietnam. Hi, I'm Chet Porcho, and welcome to an all new episode of Chet Chat. This month's show, it's all about the kids. We'll have an exciting event to benefit the Louisiana Children's Museum. Edible Schoolyards is here tossing up a great summer dish. We'll show you a special DIY kid approved segment. And in our design time, I'll show you some great decor for kids room. So guys, let's do this. Design show, Chet Chat. Design show, Chet Chat. I'm Chet Porsche, and I've got designs. I'm Chet Porsche, and I've got designs. I'm Chet Porsche, and I've got designs. I'm Chet Porsche on LAE. I'm Chet Porsche on LAE. Chet Chat on LAE. Chet Chat on LAE. I'm Chet Porsche, and I've got designs. New Orleans. Guys, the Louisiana Children's Museum is holding their 15th annual Cherish the Children's Gala on August the 24th. Rebecca Duckard is here to tell us about this exciting event. Thank you so much for coming back. Thank you. I'm glad to be back. So tell us another year, Cherish the Children. Tell us about the event again this year. Well, we're very excited. We're celebrating our 15th year, so it's a big anniversary for us. It's a very established event in the community, and mm -hmm. um, we're very excited. We're once again sponsored by Capital One Bank. Mm -hmm. They're a longtime supporter of us. We're really lucky to have longtime artists and uh, um, financial supporters backing up this event. It really, you know, helps with the quality of it, makes it a great time for everyone. Well, this chair looks kind of familiar uh, I to know, me. I know, I yeah. know. This was that wonderful chair that you did last year, um, the Sometimes Picayune chair. Uh -huh. um, it's It was a huge hit, um, and you, I remember you coupled it with some interior design um, services, so right. that was a really great package. And it was a definite favorite that night, and our the person who won it was kind enough to let us borrow it for the show today. Oh, well, thank yes, you, thank was, you. It, we loved the, it. The pressure is on this year to do something <laughs> even to top this. So this was like my baby, so I'm working really hard to think of something that's yeah. gonna really be great. So tell us how you get the artists to actually donate their time and the chairs. Well, I was saying before, we have, we're lucky because we are in our 15th year, so over the years we've just gotten a really great core group of artists that always support. Um, we have Mr. Luis Colmenares, who's a local mm -hmm. uh, metal worker who gives us beautiful chairs for our live chalk auction every year. He's a great guy. Um, he's a great guy. Um, and then we also just sometimes get just brand new community partners, people that kind of come out of the woodworks who approach us. Um, so it's just really people wanting to support the Children's Museum in the way they can. And it's, you know, it's a really great time to show your artistic talents right. at this event. So tell me about this chair. That is our Muses chair from last year. The Muses organization donated that. Um, mm -hmm. I think one of the actual Muse members made it. and. Um, and it was a big hit as well. It's a great um, chair. Yeah, it's very festive, yes. very fun. Um, yeah, we're, we're lucky to have, you know, just really different, All that's the exciting thing about this event is it's such an eclectic mix of chairs uh -huh. um, for the auction that, you know, it, you really get a, a cool mix um, happening there. Kids chairs, uh, fancy chairs for your home, right. or just really fun, you know, whimsical chairs such as that one. So does this event have a theme? Yes, this year's theme is kind of a New Orleans style Wizard of Oz. Uh -huh. um, the theme saying there's no place like home. Right. So we're really kind of playing up on the wonderful things about our city um, and just why it's such a whimsical, wonderful place to be. Tell us why people should support the Louisiana Children's Museum. Well, all of our um, events, that, like these fundraising events, all the proceeds go towards our year-round exhibits and educational programs. The museum is a fun place to go with your family and right. to play. Mm -hmm. um, we have lots of great educational opportunities within the walls of the museum, but a lot of people don't realize that we do so much out in the community in different child care centers and schools. Um, I didn't even realize yeah, that. Can you tell us really a little do. bit about how, what we that's We do different, um, different learning through play um, programs like Play Power. We do different reading and um, literacy programs. It's just a really great thing that we do for outreach in the community and all of these events that we have, while they're fun and mm -hmm. festive and you can have a great time, they also go towards um, these really important things that we're doing for the community. So. That's wonderful. And the Louisiana Children's Museum also has other fundraisers throughout the year. Tell us a little bit about those so we can make sure that we're supporting all of those. We do. We have all kinds of different educational programs constantly happening, but we have three major fundraisers each year. Um, we have Cherish the Children, which is our early fall event. Mm -hmm. We have Festival of Trees, which is a fairly new event that we started two years ago. 
it is our new holiday event. Right. So the it's museum, a huge event, yeah, right? it's really big and it's growing each mm -hmm. year. Um, we set up the museum for a whole month. Um, very festive for the holidays. It's not just Christmas. It's um, artists and schools and community partners create trees of all kinds, their own interpretation of trees. We auction those off. Um, so it's very much along the lines of Cherish the Children. And then we have different programming and events centered around that you know time at the museum. Different family events, different grown-up parties. So it's a really great new tradition for, for the holidays. Hey, and then, to, oh, I'm sorry. No, and then in the, the springtime, we have our Children's World's Fair, which is our big Love fundraiser. That, it's our fundraiser that's geared completely towards kids. Mm -hmm. And it is what it is, it, what it says. Um, it's like a miniature Epcot Center. So we, we highlight eight different countries. Each country has a whole exhibit full of food, music, crafts, you know, different traditional clothing. That's a really great way for families and kids to kind of learn about different countries that they may not ever visit or know about. So yeah, that's great. You really guys do nice. great stuff there. When my little niece and nephew comes in, we always have to go to the Louisiana Children's Museum. They place. love the shopping. <laughs> yeah. Yes, that, that's one place that, you know, for however old you are, that's always, you know, a big favorite, the, the little, the bubbles and yeah. the shopping area. So we have to wrap it up, but before we wrap up, tell us again about the event, where you can go to get tickets if you want to get involved. Okay, um, Cherish the Children is Saturday, August 24th at the Children's Museum. Um, you can visit our website, www.lcm.org, to find out more about the event, to purchase tickets, um, or just call the museum. Um, we will definitely be there to help you, and it's going to be a, a great time. We're Good. excited about it. Well, thanks for coming back again thanks. on the Chet Chet Show. Sure. Good luck this year. Thank you. The pressure's on. I know. I'm looking forward to seeing it. <laughs> Thank <laughs> It'll you. It'll be great. Thanks so much. You're welcome. Well, guys, we'll be right back. Guys, this is the part of the Chat Chat show that we all love. It's the DIY part of the show. And with school just around the corner, Susie Martinez of Art and Cahill Academy and her special helper, Kale, are here to show us some great DIY teacher gifts. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having me. And Kale, you're representing the bow tie club. I love your bow tie. Yes, <laughs> you love it too, right? So, you know, school is just around the corner and you are a teacher and so you have some great DIY things that teachers can do yes. in school but also parents can do at home with their, with their kids. Tell us about exactly what we're going to do today. Absolutely. Well, first off, we're going to start with an Apple Notepad, which okay. basically um, I prefer to ah. use something, being a teacher myself, a little scribble notepad. Right. Um, but you can do any like old used books or coloring books, you know, a lot of like upcycling and recycling ideas to go with that. But what we're going to do, we're, I have a stack of paper here and Kale is going to help me draw some apples. Kale's excited to do that, right? Can you help me do that? All right. This is, uh, I basically use a template because okay. when you have a kid helping you, it'd uh -huh. probably be a little bit better, especially at a younger age. Right. They may not necessarily know how to draw an apple shape per se, um, but a lot of times you can even use like a half heart shape. Mm -hmm. um, I prefer to kind of go with the apple itself. Oh, there we go. So right here, what he's going to do on our stack. If you want to help him hold sure. it, that'd be awesome. Hell, can I hold this while you do while you draw? There we go. We're just gonna trace it out wow. and then just kind of use that and cut, you know, a short stack at a time. Um, I like to grab like a stack and then fold it over just to kind of so you could get more exactly. Yeah, cut Kale is that doing job. really well with that. That is awesome. Awesome. And Thank then, you so much. And then what's the next step? Kale, you got to help with the next step, too, because that was really, really good. Well, after you do several apples, it comes to mommy and daddy or teacher, uh -huh. you know, cutting out with the scissors. Right. Now, if you do have a child that is capable of using their own safety mm -hmm. scissors, you know, that is definitely fine, too. But I will do this. And while I'm cutting, Kale, if you could do one more stack of apples for me. Wow. Here you go, Kale. We can Let's get started that. on the rest. So how did you come up with this concept? Because one of the things that we always talk about on Chet Chat is recycling and upcycling, using it what you have. And this is definitely a recycle and upcycle project. Well, I work with toddlers, actually, the three-year-old range. And it's always, um, you know, sometimes trying to, to keep their little minds engaged uh -huh. and going. But um, I find that, you know, a lot of the times they're just so into just the most random things, the cardboard boxes or right. paper towel rings. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, this something was like, I thought they'd find that it would both be functional that I could use in my classroom as well. Um, or, you know, even something that like as kids that age that we could, 
you know, maybe do for one of their mommies or daddies, right. you know, so you can put it on their desk. But, yeah. um, you know, just it's one of the, it's a fun twist on that teacher favorite of having an apple, especially right. with back to school going uh -huh. on. Um, you know, and obviously something functional that they could use on their desk. So you as well. are a teacher at Orton K. Hill. That, How yes. did you get into teaching, especially? kids that young? Well, I actually grew up at that school. Oh, really? I did. That's a and great story. So you <laughs> went back to the school that you grew up I in, and did. now you're a teacher there. That's great. Yes, um, definitely my alma mater and, you know, one of my fondest memories growing up as a child. Um, I actually ventured out into retail. Uh -huh. I worked so did for, I. <laughs> I worked for a big, you know, big name retail company for six years, which I absolutely loved. Uh -huh. um, and I uh, actually had worked in a kid's store and just being in very engaged with the children mm -hmm. and seeing them on a day-to-day -day basis, you know, I realized how much I, I loved working with that, you know, age group. And before I moved away from New Orleans, mm -hmm. I had actually coached cheerleading. Oh, really? And so yeah. you just love kids. You just I, love I do, kids. I do, uh -huh. I do. I have two nephews, two nieces, and that I absolutely adore. That's <laughs> They're great. superstars, but, um, yeah, I just I just realized one day I'm like, you know what? I love retail, but I think I want to get back into the school circuit. So I did. I found my way back at Cahill, and of course they welcomed me with open arms. It was a very easy transition, and uh, you know, obviously I enjoy and love what I do. Yeah, the I can tell. I can tell. So what's the next step in this DIY okay, project? Okay, so I actually have some pre-cut stacks that are already uh -huh. made and what we're going to do and this is the part where it becomes you know mommy and daddy's job or right. teacher's job but you want to separate your stack probably into two piles it'd be more ideal uh -huh. uh, you can make it as thick or as thin as you want and uh, what we're going to do is we're going to hot glue the side now some people I see them done. <laughs> that is awesome thank you, you so much you did great. and you cut out all these right yes. you did all of these beforehand you were ready for tv kale Actually, came ready for tv i am missing a big step so thank you kale so much for getting me back on track this is a child uh, a child job can mm -hmm. you color the side of the apple for me red can you hold this you stack and do this? Want me to this? hold it while you color it? There we go. Don't get it on our shirts. <laughs> you <laughs> got to color, color the color side. Color the side of it. Like this. Wow. And obviously, you know. What color is that? Red. Kale Smart. He knows his <laughs> colors, definitely. <laughs> now, some people do like to use spray paint uh -huh. or, um, you know, even maybe some watercolors, Sharpie. Obviously, when you're working with children, washable markers would be more ideal. Okay. Um, so, or some finger paint. So that's the, and that's so the second step. And so, unfortunately, we have to start wrapping up. So that's the second step. And from that, it kind of goes to this part. yes this so this is i mean i just love this an apple that's made with all recycled upcycle products i mean this is really really great not only for teachers but actually parents can do this with their kids at home as well absolutely absolutely it's a very fun family project and really fast you bought another item here i did what, um tell us about this okay so what i made i took a mason jar uh -huh. i love doing party planning for uh -huh. my family and i'm obsessed <laughs> with mason jars right so all i did was just grab some bees that i got at the dollar store very cheap very frugal uh -huh. stuck them at the bottom and then you can just you know get your your flowers that um they can either come from the dollar store right. or any craft I love store, the dollar store too, i know store. it's like little wonders uh -huh. okay this will just snap off. And what we're doing, um, obviously, this particular flower right. stuff, we're going to have to work our way through. But you're going to take the floral tape. Okay. And once you get through all this, um, we're just going to start wrapping around the pen. So you just basically just wrap this around you here. basically just wrap it around the pen. It comes working like this. Now, with floral tape, it can be very sticky. Uh -huh. So it's best to work with smaller segments and then to pull tight as you wrap around. You know what I love about this? Because actually, you get two for one. You get a vase full of flowers, Absolutely. but also a pen. Yes. <laughs> so this has been very fun. Thank you guys so much for oh, being thank you here. So much. Yeah, was that fun? You want to do me a favor and look at right at that camera and say, we'll be right back. We'll be right back. There you go. <laughs> Great job. High five. You did awesome. I am for the child who lives in motels, cars, and shelters. Now in foster care, a group home, where he sleeps not on a bed, but on a temporary cot. He is the child I am for. 
I am a CASA volunteer. I am you. This is Nightly Business Report with Susie Garib and Tom Hudson. Weeknights at 5.30 p.m. on LAE. Guys, for today's cooking segment, we have Katie Pedroza of Edible Schoolyards and Ariana McKnight of NOCA to show us how to make a delicious summer salad. Guys, thank you so much for being here. Thank you for having us. So recently, I was on Worst Cooks in America, and um, one of the challenges was making really great salads. And so I was asking you earlier, how do you get kids to enjoy a really great salad? Yes, well I think there are two ways to get kids to enjoy salad and one way is to include things that you know they love mm -hmm. like peanuts and sunflower seeds, things that are salty and crunchy mm -hmm. uh, and the other most important way to get kids to eat salad is to let them help you make the salad. Gotcha, that's the key. That is the secret. Yes. So tell us about Edible Schoolyard. Edible Schoolyard is part of First Line Schools uh, which is a charter school system here in New Orleans. We have five schools. Mm -hmm. um, all five of our schools have beautiful gardens where we grow edibles and at two of our schools we have full cooking classes so just like kids go to art and PE they get to come to garden and kitchen class and I think that's really important yes it's fun yes so Ariana you go to NOCA tell me about your involvement in this program well I'm in the culinary arts department and I'm also involved in rethink which is also connected to edible schoolyard and like we work together with food justice and everything and yeah. and I heard you're inspiring to be a great chef yes. not like me who mm. <laughs> is a bad cook but trying to be a better one so that's yeah. why we're having these cooking segments yeah. so maybe one day you'll be able to teach me how to cook mm -hmm. basically <laughs> yeah <laughs> So what are we gonna make today? All right, so today we're making my play on a Burmese salad. Okay. Uh, traditionally, Burmese salad has fermented tea leaves, which mm -hmm. are really hard to find in the States. Right. So I have substituted romaine lettuce instead. Which is probably better for kids. Yes, exactly. <laughs> like, fermented tea leaves would probably be a really hard sell for the kids, right. but for the adults out there, I gotta say, it's so, so delicious yeah, to I have agree. the salad that way. Um, so our salad has a lot of components to it, but the mm -hmm. greatest thing about our salad is that there's only one thing you have to cook, which are the garlic chips. Right. Um, so I have some oil on the stove here mm -hmm. and I have some garlic cloves and I'm just going to cut the garlic cloves so that they're about this uh, width of a playing card um, so that they all fry really evenly. So we're just looking for these little kind of paper thin uh -huh. chips here. And as a true TV chef, I already have some cut. There I have them go. in oil because um, garlic can tend to oxidize. Uh -huh. So you want to hold them in oil. So I'm going to go ahead and add that right to our oil here. And this is just regular olive oil mm -hmm. that we're cooking with. And the best thing about this is that not only do you end up with delicious garlic chips, but you then end up end with up, the steam face. Well, yeah. <laughs> Which is really great for my skin. That um, works too. <laughs> you get delicious uh, garlic oil so now you can use this oil to make a different salad in the right. future you can cook with it uh -huh. pasta you know if you want to put a little oil on your pasta at the end um, so I'm just kind of stirring it around to make sure that it all cooks evenly and you can see it's already getting a little yeah. bit toasty brown so once I see that happening I'm just going to turn my flame off so it really doesn't take that long to cook these not days. at all no and you do want to be really careful because burnt garlic tastes very disgusting right, and right. toasty garlic tastes really delicious well, uh, while you do that, I'm going to talk to Ariana. Okay. Ariana, what is your favorite thing to cook? Uh, my favorite thing to cook is pasta, and I love bacon. You love bacon? Mm -hmm. Bacon's difficult, but mm -hmm. if you can become a good baker, that almost means you're going to be a great chef. <laughs> yeah. So what, is your, what are you inspired to do after being a chef? So, you know, do you want to be a bacon chef? Do you want to be a regular chef? What do you want to do? I want to be like a chef, like an executive chef in my own restaurant. In your own restaurant. And I also want to like open my own bakery. Really? What would your restaurant be called if you had a restaurant? 
I don't know. Ariana's place? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I like it. So what, how do we start putting the salad together? Okay. So um, I ha on the plate here, I have it as they serve it to you traditionally right. in a Burmese mm -hmm. restaurant, which is kind of part of the fun is that you get to see right. everything there. So another one of my favorite ingredients on this plate are these little dried shrimps. Yeah. Um, so our local fishermen, when right. they catch the big shrimps that they sell to the restaurant, they have these little guys that they dehydrate okay. and they sell. And so I have that chopped up really fine here. Okay. I have some dry roasted sunflower seeds, right. dry roasted peanuts, toasted sesame seeds, mm -hmm. our garlic chips, right. um, and then I love to use local and seasonal ingredients. That's important. Yeah, so I have some cucumbers and tomatoes that I picked up at Holly Grove okay. yesterday, and then I have some peppers that I harvested from one of our um, schools, uh, Langston Hughes Academy. Mm -hmm. They're growing wildly in their garden right now, so I have those chopped up fine, and my romaine lettuce. And then the final ingredient is just a squeeze of lemon. So I'm gonna put this lemon on here, and then we're just gonna mix it right here on the plate. Perfect. So can I help you with something? Yeah. Okay. So we can go ahead and slide it oh, all right Oh, you just right put it all together? Here. Yep. Wow. Easy peasy. Oh. I can see why kids would like this. I mean, it's actually pretty. It almost seems like a sesame seed salad. Mm -hmm. Great. You can just mix that up and then put it right back on the plate, and, uh, and we'll be ready to go. And I'm gonna I'm gonna test this and make sure that it tastes really good. Great. And since it is so hot right now in the summer, the mm -hmm. best thing about this dish is the only thing you've heated up is the oil to make these garlic chips. And the garlic chips will hold for a month, so you don't even have to cook them right away. You can already have them ready to go. Mmm. It's very fresh. Mm -hmm. I can taste the garlic chips. Very cool. It's a great summer salad. Great, thank you. So thank you guys so much for being here. Yes, thanks for having us. Did you have fun? Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> guys, stay with us. We'll be right back. Because play might be the best way to fight obesity. Because staying connected makes my family stronger. Because a safe place after school can lead to success in school. Because physical activity is vital to my health and well-being. Because I need to make my world better. Because playing team sports teaches character and social skills. Because we need each other. Because we need each other. Because we need each other. Guys, it's our design time. This month I'm gonna show you some great decorating ideas for your kids' rooms. And there's a lot of great things that are trending right now in kids' room. One of the great things that's trending right now is kids' furniture. So this stool is something that's really great that you can add to your kids' decor. And one of the great things about adding kids' decor to your kids' room is that you can make the room really fun. You don't have to stick to one certain thing. When designing a room for your kid, make sure that you put a little bit of their personality in it. One way you can do that is just by buying a piece of art. Or if your kid likes to do it yourself, you can make your kid, your kid can make its own art and you can hang that on the wall as well. One of the things I always like to say when it comes to design is that there's a couple of things that you can do to add really something great to a room. You can simply add a pillow to any room decor, home decor, and that can take the room basically from draft to fab in like no time. So this is another great thing. Earlier, earlier we talked about what's great, what's, to, what's great that's trending right now in interior design. Usually the things that trends in interior design always ends up in kids' room as well. Wallpaper is one of the great things that's trending right now, and it's also trending big in kids' design. So go ahead and you can use this wallpaper not only on the wall, but you can also use wallpaper on the ceiling. This is a great way that you can enhance a kid's room. Also be sure that whenever you're doing a kid's room that you're adding something really fun, really like wallpaper or also fabrics. Make the room fun, don't make it so so serious, a kid's room should be fun. Another great thing is you can use any kind of wall decor. This also enhances the wall, but also it'll give the kids something to look at and they'll have fun with it. One of the big things that I talk about in design is that you know painting and lighting is one of the two bases for any great interior design project. So whenever you're doing your kid's room, be sure that you're giving them some really great lights because that will really enhance the whole room as well. And we always try to like to end design time with the do-it-yourself. So this this is called an age stick. And what we did here is that we basically took an old recycled piece of wood. We took some old coffee grinds, and you have to use the darker coffee grinds to do this. You take 
that, and then you stain the wood with the coffee grinds. You let that set overnight, and it becomes this really beautiful patina color. After that's, after that's done, you can take it and just measure it out. And this is something that you can have in your kid's room that they actually can have for a long time. So guys, this has been our design time. I hope you enjoyed today's show and got some really great ideas. I'd like to thank all my guests for being here today. If you have a local business or an organization that you would like to see featured on an upcoming episode of Chet Chat, it's simple. Just email us at chetchat at gmail.com. And for more information on this episode, you can visit my website at www.chetporshowdesign.com. Click on our blog, but you can also follow me on Twitter, at Chet Porsche. I'm Chet Porsche, guys, and I've got designs for New Orleans. We'll see you guys next month. Chet Chat is underwritten by the law offices of Tim Fields and Faux Orchid, the Nouvelle Cuisine of Vietnam.